joining me today. I'm Ralph Sexton, and I invite you to stay tuned for the next few moments as we study the Word of the Lord. Before I get into the message, I have a very, very important announcement. Would you please take time to go to our website, ralphsexton.com. As you well know, we've been in Israel and we have just finished a documentary of several hours of research information. And it's gonna be airing on our YouTube channel, our Facebook channel. But the easiest and fastest way to go to it is just go to ralphsexton.com and the link will take you right to the documentary. I want to encourage you to see it. I want to encourage you to take time. In the next three or four weeks, we're gonna be airing reactions to the documentary. In other words, when Pastor Winston and I were in Israel and we left one of the sites of the massacre, then we would come back to the hotel and discuss what we have seen and the implications of it. So please, Take time, go to ralphsexton.com, our YouTube channel, Ralph Sexton Ministries there, Facebook, Ralph Sexton Ministries Facebook page, and be a part of this documentary. Let us know where you're watching from, let us know your comments, and we really, really do need and desire your prayers. It's a pivotal time in our country, but it's a pivotal time for the nation of Israel. They're all alone. After six months, all of a sudden, all their friends have turned against them, even America. So this is a dangerous time for our country. It's a dangerous time for Israel. So we're using this documentary to show you what happened. It's entitled, The Massacre of My People. That's ralphsexton.com. Well, let's get into the message today. We're gonna to go to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee a year ago, and I'm gonna be bringing you one of the messages on the strength and might of God. This was entitled, The Power of God. Take your Bible tonight and turn to the book of Job, if you would. Job chapter number nine. Job chapter nine. This is a powerful chapter that deals with the greatness of God and the power of God. Job is answering those around him, and he said, I know it is so of a truth, but how should man be just with God? Job was understanding the weakness of his own humanity. Job was understanding that he could not redeem himself. Job was understanding that he had no righteousness of his own. And Job was understanding that he could not keep himself. It's the power of God for all that we need. And then it says over in verse number seven, it says about this great God and his power, which commanded the sun and it riseth not and sealeth up the stars. And then down in verse number 10, which doeth great things past founding out. Think about serving a God and having a relationship with a God that does great things that we have yet to discover. We don't know all about God even yet. We'll have to see him and be like him and to be with him to understand who he is. And the wonders without number I look at all this wonderful group of people, thousands gathered here in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and the wonder of wonders that God invaded your world. God went into your life. All of us have different backgrounds. All of us have different stories. But boy, God invaded my world and he invaded your world that I could be here tonight with a bunch of people that love the Lord and love his word. I'm fascinated with the power of God. The power of God has been on my heart for several weeks. I've been praying. I realize the older I get and the more life experience I have, how really weak I am. I understand I can do nothing through my intellect, my abilities, or my talents. It takes the presence of God and the power of God. And how feeble we are without this presence of God upon our lives. The power of God is so real and it's so dramatic that it's almost past our vocabulary. It's way past our understanding, but it's also a time of knowing that we need the Lord like never before because the more we see Him, I think the more we understand how weak we really are. And that draws that love and the desire I want to spend more time with him. 
I want to be more like him. And God, if you would make that happen. I like the word power. I not only like God, but I like the word power, the power of God. I've always loved power. I like to watch a jet plane take off. It looks like it's impossible. It's too big. It's got too many tires. It's got two wings are way too long. It's loaded with too many people. There's no way it can take off. But all of a sudden, he'll reach over and get that stick, and he'll begin to push them forward, and the ground will begin to vibrate, and those jet engines begin to whine. And in a little while, it'll jump forward and begin down that runway. And the further it goes, I can feel him up front. He's putting the, the coal on the fire, and he's going for more and more power until in a moment it'll break forth free of gravity and take off and become airborne. An impossibility in my mind for it to even get off the ground. But with enough power, it can fly. I like to think about as I stand at the coastline and I watch the waves building with an approaching storm and I see the barriers that men have made. I see the houses, the roads, and the interstates. But a few hours later, the pounding of those waves and the power of tons of water. And yet, according to the word of God, that the boundary has been set. And God said these mighty waves and this mighty place with all of its power when it comes to the appointed place that that wave will have to bow down at the power of a holy God. I have some friends of mine that have been around music and I've also got some friends that have the power when they play that that music comes alive to touch the heart and the lives of men. I love to hear the Dutch violinist, Andre, and I like to see the power of that music to touch the hearts of people. People will be moved to tears and emotion because of the power of the music. A lot of times in a funeral service, families never weep. They never shed a tear until a song is sung that reminds them of mama or daddy. It's the power of the music. I like not only the power of the music and the power of nature and the power of energy. I like it when NASCAR has them all lined up down there getting ready to go at Daytona. And all of a sudden there's a voice from up top, gentlemen, start your engines. And the ground begins to vibrate with all those motors coming on at the same time. And I can't help it. I love it. I love to smell those tires burning. I like the smell of that gasoline but I like the sound of the power. I like it because all that energy's been turned loose. I've got several friends. One of my board members just passed away, Brother Ron Hawks, and he was a drag uh, car driver. He had a dragster, and boy, those big pipes curling up and those making that little old front end jump off the ground, the power of those big engines. and. Paul Smith, one of the guys in our church, he made a living racing drag cars and he would tweak the engine to get more power, spend hours with it just to get a few more horsepower because he was feeding his family with the winds and sometimes he would race on Friday night, then race again at Hickory on Saturday night. And why? Because he had a family to feed. But to win, he had to have more power. And then I think about Robert Presley there in our church family. And he was a NASCAR driver and he loved the oval track and he would race. And, uh, and I, that's when I was a teenage boy and, and uh, I got caught up in all the power of those engines. And uh, I saved my money and I bought a little old 57 Chevrolet convertible and it had a 283 block. But you know what? I wasn't satisfied. I wanted more power. I wanted something more than what was under the hood. And I saved my money to take it to Banjo Matthews and he built the best race car engines and he took my little 283 engine block, he bought it out to a 301, he had it ported and polished, he put in a three quarter racing cam, he put in a Corvette 
Corvette clutch and a truck rear end and the Hearst Mystery Shifter. And out front over that little boy, he put three two-barrel hollies so that it'd stand up and had the power running back to the back end. I could burn a clutch up every 30 days and have to buy a pair of tires on the back every two weeks. But I loved the power. I wanted, if I'm going to have it, if I'm going to do it, I want to have the power. And if I'm going to serve God, I want the power of God. I want the presence of God. I want to see God do something for this generation. My God is a great God. He's a God of power. He's a God of authority. And today you're living in a generation that's seeing secular power. You're seeing all kinds of military power. Oh, earlier this week, the Chinese communists put online the hypersonic missiles. Those missiles are ready for them to make their invasion against the island of Taiwan. And they took and said, if we're going to defeat America, we've got to have more power than the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, the hypersonic missile flies five times faster than the speed of sound. Five times faster. We don't have a missile. If we launch a defensive Patriot missile, it can't catch it. It can't get to it. We don't have a fighter jet that can go five times the speed of sound. But they've got the power. They've got the rocket. They've got the engineering. And while we're trying to get our military to use the right pronoun, they're trying to get more power in their rockets. Do you understand? We need power, and it needs to be at God's house, but we need some power of leadership in the White House that we can be a people of faith for this day and for this generation. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not have to roll over and play dead and say the devil's going to win and the devil's going to be a champion for our children and our grandchildren. We need to know that God is still available for you and for me to have power in our lives as we walk in faith and believing for the Lamb of God for this generation. Thank you for allowing me to interrupt for just a moment. So many of you have contacted us over the last few weeks and months about the messages that we do sometimes on the road and in different churches and some of your favorites, like working on the ark, but not on board. The shepherd and the sheep we filmed in Israel. And today, we want to offer you this program, The Power of God, in its entirety. This was filmed at the LeConte Center, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, one year ago. And I'd like for you to have a copy. And for a gift, listen to me carefully, a gift of any size. If you'll help the ministry, it's a pivotal time. We're taking a great stand for Israel, and as you can imagine, we're taking a lot of heat at the same time. But you can pray for us, and you can help support us. Will you stand with us? Be a part. Our token of thanks is to send you one of the DVDs on the power of God. And then don't forget to go to the website, ralphsexton.com, for the documentary. Let's get back to the Lacoste Center. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the power of God will not fade. You think about the power of God. My God is a God of power. I like even singing that song. All hail the power of Jesus' name. That we would remember his power. We would salute his power. When we do our daily prayer lives and we begin to come into his presence in prayer and you begin every day to go through your adoration prayer and then you begin to go through in your prayer of thankfulness and then you begin to go through your prayer of confession. And then you go through your prayer of saying, God, I want to be changed. I want to have action in my life. Boy, then I begin to realize I cannot do what I want to do without the power of God. I cannot accomplish what I want to accomplish without the power of God. Not for the methods and motives of men, but for the soul of my babies, the soul of my children, for the sake of our churches, for the sake of our land. I had a Christian educator call me this week 
because they were so broken hearted that at a Christian school activity that uh, two Christian kids stole razors and were gone back to the Christian school and started cutting themselves. That's a, pub, that's a Christian school, not a public school. If it's that bad in our Christian school because we've lost the power of God, what on earth are our babies going through in the public schools of America if we don't have revival for this day and for this generation? We need to see the presence of God working. And when I begin to go down in, in Job and I go on down to that 19th verse, look what it says down in verse number 19. When you go down there, it says, if I speak of strength, lo, he is what? Strong. In other words, Job said, if you're going to talk about power, if you're going to talk about strength, then you're going to be talking about my God. He's a God of strength. In the Hebrew, if I read that verse, lo, he is strong. The Hebrew word for strong signifies conquering, prevailing strength. It's not just strength for a minute. It's not just a burst of energy. It's not just an energy drink. It's not just a protein shake. But this is the kind of power and energy that is prevailing. It never fades because your God never fades. He's a God of power. He's a God of authority. But he's a God of endurance. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never abandon you. He'll never quit on you. He'll never back up on you. He'll never run out on you. He won't get yelling and turn the other way. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a prevailing God, a powerful God, a God with authority for this day and hour that we're living in. He can do with his creation as much as he wants to. Daniel 4 talks about his. He did do it according to his will. It says that God sits upon the height court of the universe. Psalm 65 and verse 7. He putteth down one and raises up another. Isaiah 46 and verse number 10. The Bible says that God declared, I will do all of my pleasure. That's the power that God has. God has the power to change the situation. The thing you've given up on, God's got the power to fix. The wayward son you've given up on, the power of God can go get him. The granddaughter that's out in the world, she can't hide from this God. He's got the power. The marriage that's coming unglued and falling apart, the power of this God can weld those two hearts back together with help and hope and healing. This is a God that does unbelievable things. A God with power. Think about the mighty King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar, he had no power. He could not resist this great and mighty God. When we turn around, Nebuchadnezzar's in his front yard, crawling on his hands and knees, picking grass like an animal because he met the power of God. God with power and God with authority. Listen, it is the same God that we love and serve that broke the head of the Babylonian Empire, the greatest power on earth at that day, building, architecture, science, uh, all of the experiments in medicine under the Babylonian kings. But yet when they encountered the holy God of the universe, it became many, many tickle you far, son. It became this day, this day your soul shall be required of thee. It's the power of God that can give a man accountability that he's got an appointment to make. And ladies and gentlemen, this is God that you're serving tonight, the God that you're facing, the same God that had the power when angels sinned in heaven, that he had the power to condemn them to a devil's hell. Isaiah 14, 12 talks about Lucifer, how he was taken and fallen because he went against a holy God. It is God that sets these boundaries. Job 38 and 11, he said unto all of this creation, even to the waves that I mentioned to you earlier, he's got this power and authority. But you think about this. I think about the power not only that I see in the universe and the power that I see in the world today, but I see in the back of my mind when I'm all alone, I'm at the house, and I begin to think about creation. 
And what happened on that day? What happened when I got to the power of Genesis 1 and verse 1? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, how do you create? What kind of power are we talking about? I'm talking about when there was nothing, there was something. I'm talking about when there was nothing to work with, there was God. There, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And when that moment in Galatians 4, 4, in the fullness of time, becomes right unto the maturity of the will of a divine and sovereign holy God, God is stepped into that midst of that darkness and on the authority of his own name, standing on nothing, absolute emptiness into that place, he pulled back the veil of darkness and began to throw suns and stars off of his fingertips because he had the power. The endless shock waves of that day when he spoke, those shock waves are still rolling today all through creation and all through eternity. He spoke with power, mighty power, the authority to say, I'll throw a star off of this hand and a galaxy off this hand and a comet off this hand and from his fingertips, flaming suns. And we saw streaming stars and we saw golden galaxies and planets and moons all coming out of his holy and divine creation. What a mighty God we serve. God's power. The power to create. The power to stand in the darkness of nothing and to bring everything into existence. And when that God was creating, standing there in the beginning, every insect that's going to be born, he knew about it. Every bird that's going to fly, he knew about it. Every fish that's going to swim, he knew about it. Hey, he knew the day your mama and your daddy would kiss. Hey, he knew the day you'd come into this world. And the Bible says before you got here, he loved you and he knew you and he prayed for you because he's a holy God, a mighty God, a powerful God that had all this wrapped up inside of his love. What is authority, ladies and gentlemen? What is authority without power? Job 9, 4 talked about it. He is mighty in strength. I told you about his power in creation. Creation requires infinite power. God's power. You can't create. Scientists can try to duplicate. They said in England a few months ago that they had printed out the human genome, every chromosome of the human body. They had a blueprint. The scientists said, we're ready to be God. We can create. But they got one little problem. They put all the minerals and nutrients and proteins and amino acids in a test tube. But it needs a little something. It needs a little something called life. And they, 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 they can't get a hold of that. They got everything they think they need, but they don't have what it has. And what it has is the breath of God. It's the power. It's the life. It's the energy. It's what God put in you the day you were dead and trespassed and sin. And this holy God invaded your darkness and your hell and your ungodliness. And he didn't run away from the darkness, but he invaded your darkness to make you new in him. The power of God. God can create without tools because there is no matter to work upon. He needs no matter. He creates without labor because he, all he has to do is speak. He had nothing to help him when he created. And one of the beauties of creation, the more I, I've been working and thinking about the creation of God and the power of God and the energy of God and the authority of God. There was no hindrance to creation. There was no resistance. He just stood out on emptiness, looked over a vast universe of nothing, and there he began to speak with flowing authority. Suns, moons, 
stars, galaxies, comets, putting it, hanging it up, putting it in its orbit, keeping it there with the power of his word and the authority of his will. There was no resistance to this divine creator. But, uh, but it takes something, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to take home tonight. Something more than the power of creation is the power of conversion. You see, conversion became altogether different. When I got converted, there was a war. There was resistance. When God created, it was all harmony. It's just God the Father, God the Son, and God the sweet Holy Ghost, and they're just there, and he's saying, son, do something else. Son, do, oh, do that again. Yeah. And the son's just saying, do you like that, Dad? Here, here and look at this. Yeah, it's God the Father, it's God the Son, and it's God the Holy Ghost. And there's no hindrance, there's no warring, there's no hesitation. It's just the liberty and love of a triune God. Thank you for being with us today. I trust the program has been a blessing to you and to your family. And I want to thank you for your friendship. As I mentioned earlier in the program, this is a pivotal time for America. It's a dangerous time for the little nation of Israel. In six months, Israel went from being a hero, defending its land and its people, after a brutal massacre on October the 7th, to now they're the Jew of the world. It's fashionable to be against Israel. And we're even seeing people in Dearborn, Michigan have rallies chanting death to America and death to Israel. And we're trying to stand with them. We just finished a documentary. I want you to go to RalphSexton.com. This documentary is over two hours long. You can watch it in segments. I hope you'll get you a cup of coffee, ralphsexton.com. It'll link you to our YouTube site, Ralph Sexton Ministries YouTube channel. Also to our Facebook page, Ralph Sexton Ministries Facebook. It's entitled, The Massacre of My People. If you'll stand with us this week for any gift, we want to be able to send you the message in its entirety, the power of God. And if you haven't gotten the bumper sticker, I hope that you'll take advantage. We have several different kinds. You can stand with the nation of Israel. Just ask them when you write, call, or email. And then if you want to give to the Israel Fund, we're still helping in the land of Israel. So you stand with us as we all labor together, pray together, and more than anything else, let's pray for revival in America and for the peace of Jerusalem.